I'm going to tell you all about the Chevy Colorado ZR2 Bison. Two things before I begin. Subscribe to this channel and consider watching them on your television. We use Pro 4K cameras. They look great on the big screen. Seems everyone is overlanding and running king of the hammers these days, or at least loving the fashion statement. Ford has the Ranger Raptor, Jeep the Gladiator Rubicon X, Toyota Tacoma Trail Hunter is new. Chevy's mid-sized extreme machine is Colorado ZR2 Bison. It's a lot of trucks, starting with the Goodyear Wrangler tires. They're 35 inches on 17-inch AEV beadlock capable wheels. There's boron steel rocker protection and skid plates all over the underbody. In other words, this is not a poser. Pricing for Colorado ZR2 starts at $48,400. The Bison package adds $11,700. This one is fully kitted out and goes for just over $65,000 but it includes everything you'd need to do just about anything off-road, except for maybe the winch. Colorado Trail Boss is more affordable, about 42 grand, well-equipped. However, Bison's enhancements don't need to be bought and installed after the fact, and it can all be financed as a package. And these, DSSV Multimatic Spool Valve Dampers with hydraulic bump stops are a magical setup. Chevy claims the AEV bumpers offer best-in-class approach angle, departure angle, and breakover angle, and there's best-in-class ground clearance of 12.2 inches. That's great for off-roading, but getting in and out every day on a regular basis, it's quite a hike getting into the cab. You might want to practice that maneuver if you want to look suave and devoner. Unlike some welcome animation, this is high definition and smooth without any jerkiness. All Colorados move with a turbocharged 2.7-liter four-cylinder. ZR2s get the high-output TurboMax version standard for 310 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque to move 5,265 pounds of truck. Gear shifts are done with an eight-speed automatic. Love the Prindle shifter, though. No steering wheel paddles for manual control. Four-wheel drive is standard, duh, with a two-speed transfer case. An electronically selected rear differential locker, a front locker, too. At this level, there are additional drive modes that should help with any terrain that needs to be covered. ZR2 Bison competed at Mudfest, the Northwest Automotive Press Association's SUV and Pickup of the Year competition. It won the pickup division, competing against Ranger Raptor, the new Taco, and Ram 1500 Rebel. Corey Talbert, the engineering manager for the Colorado, was on hand. Loss control is going to maximize power output, minimize wheel spin. So left foot brake and go deep into the pedal, and then that and you're going to see a telltale flash when you let go of the brake it'll launch control. and so we really developed that for off-road for loose surfaces but of course on asphalt it's really fun too okay hard brake nice i'll put you back in two wheels so we don't push through the turns <laughs> this is a deep truck train mode is one pedal driving uh -huh. the feature that we developed uh, on this truck that at the Rubicon Trail, at Moab. Um, and then we offer varying levels of braking intervention with one pedal drive. Uh, I wanna show you the maximum. So shift down into low. And in low one, it's, it's, it's the most aggressive braking. So if you take your foot off the brake now, truck won't go anywhere. But as you build into the throttle, you'll hear engine torque build up and then the brakes begin to release. But it's a very controlled modulated release and allows you to have this really refined control over the truck. So go ahead and get into the throttle some. So let the truck roll out, but then start to let off the throttle and you feel the brakes come in. Yeah. And even if you take your foot off the pedal, brakes fully clamp down. Yeah. So even on this descent, once we crest, if you take your foot off the throttle pedal, the truck will stop and hold itself. At some 65 grand, chances are it's the second or third owner that will really test the abilities. Am I pessimistic or realistic? Front rear locking differentials. Okay. Um, for this surface, I don't think we'll need them. If, uh, although it's starting to get a little rutted, but let, let's try to climb in it. And if uh, we get any, any wheel slip, we'll lock the rear axle. All right. Oh, 
Oh, well, that was no problem. Yeah. Bison was tested on the Rubicon Trail. Mudfest's course is not that brutal, but it's tough enough to shed light on ability. We've actually shaped our skid plates around the camera view so we don't impede that, so we can maximize visibility around the tires. ZR2 Bison is very capable off-road, but most of its miles will probably be on pavement. Ranger Raptor with a 60 mile an hour sprint of five and a half seconds is quicker than ZR2 by a second and a half. Also, the Raptor's Turbo V6 sounds great, deep and throaty. This one sounds good, but not as good as the Raptor. If you heard turbo whistle during the startup, you won't win driving. It's quieter than expected for an off-road ready machine, mostly wind noise. This is the shape of a shoebox after all. When it comes to driving dynamics, this is no Honda Ridgeline, but considering the off-road chops, this is remarkably docile on-road. Not a lot of head bob. I'm surprised that there isn't more road noise off of the tires. It's quiet relatively and comfortable, no micro corrections. It's really impressive. That said, Colorado LT or ZR1 are more agile on blacktop, being lower to the ground with thinner tire sidewalls, plus easier to get into. Those two tow up to 7,700 pounds. Bison, 5,500. Visibility forward and to the sides is pretty good with the Bison, especially since you're raised up high, but rearward, it's awful. That tire is blocking the view. This would be a great use for one of those camera-based digital rear view mirrors. This is a high performance truck. Do not expect Ford Maverick hybrid fuel economy. The EPA rates the city mileage at 16 miles per gallon, Highway, 16 miles per gallon. Average, 16 miles per gallon. It's 16 miles per gallon all the way around. At least it takes regular grade fuel. Mid-sized trucks go where full-sized models can't. Bigger isn't always better. Time for a quick detour onto my favorite forest service road to check out the suspension at speed. I'm in Baja mode, which lets drivers slide the tail out more. The Bison's suspension setup is supremely comfortable and controlled. I'm doing 45, 55 miles an hour on this road and it's no problem at all. I mean, it's kind of hard to beat this setup. The front suspension is independent coilover shock. Rear is solid axle with semi-elliptic two-stage multi-leaf springs. The DSSV Multimatic dampers must be filled with clouds or angel hair. Everything in the cabin is smooth and controlled. Trail Boss was good on this road. Bison is in another league. The interior is similar to, but more subtle than, brother GMC Canyon AT4X. Materials directly in eye shot look good. Their lower rent down below, classic GM. These cubbies are pretty darn small. This hidden space is useful for gloves and such. Love the phone slot though. Most times it'll be charging on the Qi pad. The usual storage spaces are here too. These will be happy, this isn't hard plastic. To my eye, this space is more crafted than Ford and Toyota. Configurable gauge cluster? Check with a very readable screen and lots of information. Off-road performance gauges too, plus more cameras than a reality show production. There's always a spotter along for the expedition. The driver's seat gets power and memory. The passenger's is manual. Both are heated and vented. The wheel is toasty too. And unlike the last trail boss I drove, it telescopes. Headlight controls pinned on the touchscreen are livable since most owners will use auto mode, but leaving the parking lights on meant that I had to restart the truck to turn them off. All four windows can be lowered at once with this, but it doesn't work in reverse. They must be raised with the regular controls. GM doesn't get its due when it comes to user interfaces. This one with a right-sized 11.3-inch screen is crisp to look at, snappy to touch, and easy to navigate. Google voice commands are quite good. Hey, are there any cupcake places nearby? 
All right, there's trophy cupcakes. But require a subscription fee for full functionality. Hey, real many cupcakes. There are the right amount of hard buttons. Okay, other than the lack of a headlight switch. And GM is still offering Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in the Colorado. At least for now. None of the midsize pickup trucks have loads of space in the back seat. There's just enough room for me here to be comfortable. I'm five foot nine, headroom about that much. Knee, leg, and foot room are fine. Um, getting out, I wish I had one of those emergency airplane slides. It's quite a drop. Big water bottles can stash here, pockets on both seat backs. It almost looks like Chevy is thinking about heated seats, but those are blanks flanking the USB ports. 120 volt power too. Four cup holders to fill if using the armrest. Three thinner adults will be okay for short trips. Two will be a lot happier. The seat backs don't fold down, but the cushions tilt up in case you want to lock stuff in the cab. It splits, so a passenger can still sit back here. And small things like tools can be stowed. Because bison is raised up so high, it's a little bit harder to work out of the side of the bed. You really have to reach in to grab your tool bags and such. Like Ranger, Colorado is only sold as a crew cab with a five-foot bed. Tacoma offers choices depending on trim level. Colorado has tricks in the tailgate. This cavity is essentially locked once the tailgate is up. Uh, forget your tape measure? <laughs> oh, I know I never do. The tailgate's second level helps when carrying sheets of plywood. They rest on the fender walls, not between them like Ranger. And this. Uh, it's too big to mount underneath like the standard ZR2 does. I take advantage of pickups when I have them, and my dump run was hampered by Mr. Goodyear, for those planning on using the bed a lot. Max cargo is reduced to 1,050 pounds with bison. Pretty sure I exceeded that by at least 400 loading up rock for my yard project. Trail Boss and ZR71 handle close to 1,600 pounds. Pickup styling is based on functionality. Not much can be done to make them look truly distinctive. Details make the difference. Chevy drew up the right percentage of tough without making Colorado look like a cartoon. This is a good looking rig. Owners can help others out of jam. It would take some stupidity to get bison stuck. The AEV bumper eliminates the bed step that I like so much in GM pickups though. And the bow tie here, is a flow tie, a clever Chevy. Let's sum this up with red light, green light. Green lights, ZR2 Bison is ultra capable right out of the box, all hail the suspension. It's off-road chops don't mean on-road suffering. The interior and interface get my nod for best in segment. And the design is strong but subtle. The Clint Eastwood of pickups, uh, though the last time we met, he was behind the wheel of a Silverado. Uh, long story. Yellow light. Bison is a factory prepped off-road hero. That kit adds nearly 12 grand and it'll still lose a drag race to Ranger Raptor. ZR2's backseat is usable. Uh, no direct competitor is stretch out spacious. The user interface with extra gauges and cameras is excellent, uh, uh, but maybe some hard buttons for the lights, huh? Red lights. You knew I'd complain about the spare tire, right? Same when it comes to fuel consumption, this bison is thirsty. 12.2 inches of ground clearance means it's a chore getting into and working out of. Plus, the bison package reduces towing and hauling ability. But off-road? It really is as capable as a bison, an animal you don't want to mess with. And on pavement, it's still manageable. Like any performance machine, there are compromises. I can see why people would want the ZR2 Bison. It looks great and it has off-road chops for days right off the showroom floor. And it's good on pavement. There's not much of a compromise, but it is expensive, and if you're not going to be going on dirt roads at all, then maybe consider the regular Colorado, which is even more docile on pavements. You know, buy the truck you need. I sound like my dad. Eugene Otto is a wise man. It's smart to consider both the lofty ability and reduced livability that come by adding the Bison package to the ZR2. It'll satisfy the overlanding crowd. 
without penalizing the fashionistas too much. FYI, I'm not comparing this to Toyota Tacoma Trail Hunter and its hybrid powertrain all that much because I've not had the chance to drive that yet. Check out other people's reviews if you're curious. Once again, it's time to thank Martin Campbell. Come on up here, make your curtain call. Uh, he drives while I shoot running footage. Uh, do you like this truck? Oh, nice truck. It is a very nice truck. Um, it's expensive, but- Hard to get yeah. in and out. Oh, well. <laughs> Haggle hard at the dealership. Oh, and my yard project? Here you go. I got my workout doing this. Great truck. Hope you got something out of the video. If you did, subscribe to the channel, click notifications. Martin and I put a lot of work into these. It's a labor of love. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments. I'll try to get to you. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.